we're all along for the ride. So I think anyone, no matter where you're at in your pickleball journey, whether this is something that's a hobby, something that's fun, whether it's something that's an occupation, like we should all just be incredibly grateful. And I think uh, one thing that pickleball has than over really any other sport is there's people that care about trying to grow this sport. And you keep hearing it, grow the sport, grow the sport, grow the sport. I just think everyone should really take a step back and be incredibly grateful for how hard so many different people are working in this sport. Welcome back to the Future of Pickleball. This is the show we talk to the people that are making this sport go places, the guys that are driving, guys and gals, that are driving the ship, making things happen. Got a wonderful guest today. We're gonna to get a lot of cool insight into things going on at the pro game, at the amateur game, and across the spectrum. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got Connor Pardo, the CEO and founder of PPA Pickleball. Welcome, Connor. Hey, thanks for having me on, I appreciate that. Cool. You know, one of the things that I love about our, our opportunity to visit with, with people in the sport that are really making things happen is give us a little bit of the state of the union right now today as to where the PPA is doing as we're lining up heading towards 2024. Yeah, obviously right now um, is a really unique time for the sport of pickleball, um, pro pickleball in particular. You know, I think all of us would, would be lying if we said the last six months we knew they were gonna play out the way they played out. Absolutely. Um, but it's been, to be honest, it's been really fun to be a part of. Um, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster, but I think the, the great part for pickleball right now is I don't think the sport's ever been in such a great place. Um, we have some unification across the board when it comes to the pro organizations with Major League Pickleball and the PPA Tour both leading the way. Uh, we have really values aligned, interests aligned, and we're really, really excited really to jump into 2024. We, we have some big events to actually finish out the year here. We're, we're here at Nationals now, and man, it's really fun to, to see something like this come to life. Obviously, it's a big stage. Next week, we have another tournament in uh, Daytona, and then we have the PPA Finals. So we're kind of, it's the tell of two tells right now. We're trying to finish out a great and the best season we've had up to date in pro pickleball with also looking towards the future and trying to be prepared for what 2024 has in store. Cool. You know, the 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 characteristic and, and the obvious controversy that's gone on in the sport over the last couple of months, for our viewers, would you kind of do a little bit of a detailed breakout as opposed to, I know your schedule's out for, mm -hmm. for PPA and for MLP, kind of give the viewers a little bit of a detailed understanding of what's gonna happen in the coming six to nine months. Yeah, if you're a pickleball fan or a pickleball fanatic, like you should just have a big grin on your face because this next year is going to be a lot of fun and there's going to be a lot of pickleball. And so what's nice about aligning the two organizations is we're really going to be able to highlight two separate products. You're going to have one product that's, face, that's focused on teams and cities and team owners. And uh, you know, I think the, the, the tagline and slogan is perfect. There's nothing else like it. Like it's enthusiastic, it's fun, there's a team format. And so we're gonna be taking Major League Pickleball and we're really gonna be emphasizing the word league. And Major League Pickleball is gonna look more like a league next year. There's going to be teams, there's gonna be divisions, there's gonna be regular season matches, and all that's gonna lead up to the playoffs at the end of the year. So, you know, me as being a team owner of the Utah Black Diamonds, I wanna make sure that my team has one of the best standings and one of the best records because I wanna qualify for that season ending event. Um, vice versa on the PPA Tour, we're gonna continue the model that's been really successful up to this date. Mm -hmm. You know, really modeling our model off of other really successful sports tours, whether it be the PGA Golf or the WTA or the ATP in tennis, or even professional bowling, where our focus is we're gonna run 25 events next year and we're gonna to try to develop stars and you're gonna be able to come as an individual and prove that you're one of the best players in the world. And we're gonna see who's gonna be able to be the best, complete with, compete with the best. And that's why we think both models work so well together is you have one that's focused on creating star and it's a player driven model. You have another one that's about teams and camar camaraderie and bringing people together. And we think it's the best of both worlds. And so with the, I think it's, is it 34 events combined? Mm -hmm. Is my number right there? Yeah, it's about 34. We may add one, we may subtract one. And but. so, so uh, you know, I've seen the schedule, you're hitting major markets mm -hmm. all over the United States. 
Um, will there be will there be a way? Will the people ever have an opportunity to sort of see both an MLP and a PPA in their market, either separately or together? How will that work? Yeah, so the way we're really looking at the schedule for next year, as you say, the PPA tour, we're going to have 25 events. Um, it's actually 26. So we're going to have four events that we're going to call slams. Those are going to be our biggest events with the biggest prize payouts and um, the most amount of points. You'll see big sponsors, big cities for those events. Then the next section down will be cups, and there'll be six of those. So we're gonna have 10 of these events that are kind of elevated, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna, the rest of the events will be opens. And so we'll have 15 of those events, which will make 25, and then we'll have the PPA finals at the end of the year. So that's what the PPA tour looks like. If you jump over to MLP, one of the unique things about us you know, being aligned is we're going to be able to really cross the two organizations together. I think this weekend was a good opportunity for people to see what that looked like. For those of you who don't know, you know, we were here in Dallas and we brought Major League Pickleball here and we had Major League Pickleball on the front weekends and then the weekend behind we had um, PPA Tour Nationals yep. where we were able to kind of combine the two events. So we'll have 10 events next year that we do that same thing where on the front end we're gonna have cool. Major League Pickleball regular season matches yep. And then on the back end, we'll have the PPA Tour, and those will be at our top 10 big events. And then we're also gonna have 15 PPA standalones and six MLP standalones, and that's what makes up the whole year. Yeah, that, and that's so cool. You know, one of the things that as a, as a involved person in the game and seeing the players come in and develop, it's been amazing to me to see what's come in through the last minute roster spots at MLP where somebody was injured, somebody was yeah. sick. And I mean, we've had a couple of real stars start to drop in that I don't think anybody expected, did you? Yeah, I mean, I probably know more players than the average person Certainly. that's you know a pickleball connoisseur. So some of those names didn't surprise me. Um, but I think what you're saying is right, is there's so many players now that are coming into the space, especially with the money now where it's at today, like I couldn't tell you how long our list is from former ATP pl ATP players, WTA players, Division One college tennis players, and all of them are like, "Wow, I can stay here in the United States and I can play on a tour, and yeah. there's actually money to be made." And I think it's it's really exciting, and it's kudos to everybody because it's not one individual or one organization that really made this happen, but it's it's the brands, it's the sponsors, it's the media, it's the uh, pro organizations. I mean, we've got hundreds if not thousands of people that are responsible for this game growing so quick and you know I don't I don't think there's anything that one special individual could do like pickleball is going to grow no matter what right but you know on our end we're just saying like hey, how can I help how can I aid how can I help sure. make that progression a little quicker a little faster a little better cool you know the 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 characteristic that I find personally coming from a lifetime in the tennis world before getting into pickleball a long time ago is this model of having major pro events in uh, uh, unison with an amateur event talk about the amateur experience and what they see and get in your events yeah I mean there is not another sport where you can really have the best of both worlds and I think it's something that makes pickleball so unique the fact that you can come out and you can dedicate a week of your life and play play your own skill your own skill level your own age division have a great time playing pickleball but then also enjoy a professional event with you know live music and food and entertainment and you can go get a beer and watch Tyson McGuffin play you can go watch Annalee Waters Ben Johns and you can do that all in one weekend i think that's something that makes pickleball so special Absolutely. and it's something that we need to all you know i think maybe we take it for granted when it's something that, at least for me, my vision is to keep that going as long as possible and hopefully forever. I think it's something that, you know, one plus one equals three in this case. And then that leads us now, we've talked about the pros, we've talked about the amateurs. What is the spectator experience that you're trying to create for people that aren't coming here to play, but they just want to see this game being played at its highest levels? Yeah, I mean, spectating in pickleball has grown just like anything else, just like the paddle manufacturers have seen growth just like um, participation has seen an all-time growth. People consuming media, we've seen a ton of growth. And that's in lieu with people coming outside to be able to come and watch the best players play. Um, you know, I founded the PPA Tour back in 2019. Our first season was in 2020. And I remember even at that very first event that I ran in Mesa, I was surprised how many people came just to watch. And it's, it's grown. And so, you know, even this weekend, the stadium court sits 3,000 people 
you know, we're sold out Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We should have done more seats. Like yeah. I remember sitting and talking to Tom and he's like, oh, do you think that's enough seats? Is it too many? Is it too little? And I think it was too little. And yeah. so for us, we're just trying to create an environment where we can help the pro players be stars. And it's about them and their skills and how can we be the best people to be able to create an experience for everybody, able to, everybody to be able to watch these talented people play. Yeah. You know, I tell you, one of the things that I've enjoyed, I, I was at the first event that you did in Mesa. And it, really? I didn't we, know that. We yeah. all were sitting there waiting for the new pro game to launch. Yeah, yeah. And, well, I say those of us that were consuming our volume of pickleball. Yeah. But one of the things that I've really enjoyed and appreciated about what you guys have done is the nimbleness, the creativity that you've done. You got a couple of guys that I've now met in your organization that I love called the Hype bros and and uh and uh i've got to get this right because i know they have they have it's nighthawk and dragon and <laughs> i so, think that's their alias yeah, yes, yeah. yes but but i, I couldn't I, tell you which one was who though by the way well i know there's i know their first there's names. eric and canton we know that yeah. but what i was going to say is i think i i met those guys and i chatted with them about how that persona came about and i think it's so cool because it was quick it was nimble you saw something that was neat and fun and that the, the spectators seem to be enjoying, I thought that was a cool piece that you guys kind of embraced and, and added to the added to the repertoire. Yeah, I mean, adding things in like the hype guys, DJ Selkirk, um, trying to do more than just pickleball is some, something that's been our vision from the very beginning. Yeah, the entertainment component has to be, has to be first class. Tell me about what your vision of what venues you're looking for or what you're looking for in a venue because that's become a big topic of conversation in the sport, um, how, what, where, what is it that works best for you guys? Yeah, I think we're still, pickleball It's still new when we come to professionalism and running events that are at this size and this scale. Like there's not many places in the world that are built to host a pickleball event like this. And I think it's something that's probably a little underappreciated. Um, like here at Brookhaven, there was not one pickleball court before we got here. Right, like before we wanted to do this, like maybe they had four, maybe they had four courts, but there was not. Oh. So everything that you see here, like we we turned a tennis venue into pickleball for the weekend. Yeah. And you know we're starting to see places like that Legacy Pro Sports or that Legacy Place that's down in Arizona. You've got Daytona, um, which where we're going next week, where we're starting to see more places that could actually host these events creep in, creep up, and be a part of the tour and what we're doing. We're gonna go to a new place in Fort Lauderdale next year. That's pretty impressive. But for us, it's really just trying to understand, you know, where are there places that we can go in and retrofit to pickleball? Sure. Um, and be able to try to host what we're doing now. Like San Clemente, no pickleball courts. San Clemente Lifetime, no pickleball courts before we ever went there. Newport Beach, where they now have 40 or 50 courts, no pickleball courts before the PPA Tour went there. Um, Darling Tennis Center, no, no pickleball courts unless the PPA Tour is there. Atlanta Lifetime, no pickleball courts until the PPA right. went there. So I think, really, I think we're trying to pave a way and we've done a really good job being able to introduce all those places to pickleball and now they've all got pickleball programs and they're growing. A absolutely, no, and, and, they've, and they've bought in. It's been interesting to see. I remember, and I don't, in the, in the Denver facility that you've got there where I could tell there was some resistance the first time you went in there no more resistance yeah. and their yeah. membership is engaged and they are they are on board and rolling um, i did want to tell ask you something a uh, lot of noise been going on in the marketplace about casino gambling yeah. in pickleball mm -hmm. i know you guys are at the absolutely four on that update us where are we at on that yeah it's something that's been really exciting so this year we were able to launch live betting and man like it was an undertaking i thought we were going to be at this point a year ago mm -hmm. but we finally got there um like we're obviously uni uniquely positioned um, owning pickleballtournaments.com and pickleball brackets, which is really a data center sure. of the history of pickleball when it comes to tournaments and results um, and data. So really for us, we, we worked with our partner, Genius Sports. Uh, you know, they also, they're the official partner of the NFL, the NCAA, a few other places. And what they do, they serve as the pipe that basically feeds the data to the different sports books. Uh, FanDuel, which is the largest sports betting group in the United mm -hmm. States was the first person to jump on and we have far exceeded expectations for what pickleball really? was going to do. Mm -hmm. now, you know, expand on that a little bit. You know, something that I, we hear a lot of noise, those of us in the sport, about these things happening, but when you say it exceeded expectation, how, how did that come about? 
Yeah, I mean, they thought there would be hundreds of thousands of dollars bet this year on pickleball. We're only four events in, and it's millions of dollars that has now been bet on pickleball. <laughs> so people are engaging. I mean, yeah, yeah. a fun fact is the most bet on sport in the world right now is tennis. And uh, we just think there's going to be a big correlation with pickleball. And so FanDuel is the first to jump on. Um, we expect almost all major sports books to be able to carry the most participated sport in the United States. So the people like FanDuel, uh, PointsBet, um, BetMGM, they're all ready to go. Integration takes a long time. There's a lot of things that it's sports gambling is actually new here in the U.S. Like, sure, we're not we're not. This isn't something that's been going on for tens of years, tens or even, you know, three or four years. Like we're we're right at the forefront of it. Um, but we think this is something that's going to be obviously very important for the sport. More eyeballs, more people watching matches means yeah. more people consuming our content. Well, you know, and it's interesting being a, a dad to a lot of people in the game or of a dad's age. One of the things that was interesting to me is as my kids went through college where they engaged in, they love gambling because yeah. it's, it gives us an investment in the game. Yeah, kind of gamify it a little bit, it right? Is. And, yeah. and it's fun. And I mean, they're on the, on the phone and they're texting their friends and, and as the games go on. And I'm shocked at how much, what is it, live betting is done in the game. Is, yeah. is that part of the pickleball scene? No, it is. So where we're at right now is you can only bet on what you think the match outcome is going to be. Okay. But really the vision for pickleball is we think we're uniquely positioned where live betting is really king, where people can get in and consume and they can bet on little things right now. And that's where they make most of their money. So the future will be how many around the posts will Ben Johns hit in game two, plus or minus three, <laughs> right? <laughs> so that's nice. what we're going. Very nice, cool. You know, I'll tell you, I, I, I've enjoyed this conversation that we're having together. You know, one of the things I like my guests to do, is there anything in your messaging or any thoughts or ideas that you'd like to convey to people before I kind of wrap up my last questions for you? No, I think you did a great job. Loved coming on um, with you. I just think uh, everyone should feel really lucky to be a part of something like this. Like I find myself every day kind of pinching myself and, you know, talking to my wife, you know, like how amazing is it that we get to be in something like this, a sport like pickleball, we get to be drivers and shapers of what this is going to be, not today, but in the future. And we're all along for the ride. So I think anyone, no matter where you're at in your pickleball journey, whether this is something that's a hobby, something that's fun, whether it's something that's an occupation, like we should all just be incredibly grateful and I think uh, one thing that pickleball has than over really any other sport is there's people that care about trying to grow this sport. And you keep hearing it, grow the sport, grow the sport, grow the sport. I just think everyone should really take a step back and be incredibly grateful for how hard so many different people are working in this sport. That's exactly right. I, I, I'll tell you, I have uh, I've personally taken a little bit of a front with some of the podcasts that are a little bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit castigating of uh, some of the different tangents and engines. Yeah. Be, having been around this game for 12 years, the number of people that put effort in over decades, and an interesting thing that I love to have guys your age think about is the fact that this is the only sport in the history of the world that began with a mature population and migrated downward. Every other single sport. So we've had so many people that had the time, they had some money, they had a passion and life experience that contributed and helped grow this sport dramatically. And I didn't mean to get off on a lecture, no, but I- No, uh, it's 100% true. And so, I mean, it's 100% it, true. It's such a cool piece. You know, the, the, the things that happen in pickleball, I mean, we're, we're on warp speed. How about we get together again sometime in the future, maybe later next year when you guys are down the road and get the update. It'll look a lot different in a year, I'm sure yeah, of that. Sure it like, will, and that's what we'd like to hear about. Yeah, the one thing I can promise is you think, think about that Mesa tournament. That was only four years ago now. Here, here. And, um, you know, I was uh, 24 years old back then. I'm 28 years old now. Yeah. But I know when I'm 32 years old, we're going to see a lot more growth these next four years than we saw the last four years. Yes, sir. And, you know, we're all just happy to be along for the ride. Yeah. So Very appreciate cool. you and your time. You bet. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you we were going to have a good interview today. Connor, thank you very much. I've enjoyed having you on the show. Good thank luck you. with 2024.